Khalil Islam, then known as Thomas 15X Johnson, was also a former member of the Food of Islam. Were you ever instructed by anyone in the nation that Malcolm's got to go? If you have a chance, make it happen. Oh, yeah. They did tell you that. Sure, that was common knowledge. How was that to happen? Was there ever any instruction on how no, he would be no, taken out? No instruction, but it was stated that, you know, he's got to go. He slandered on Elijah Muhammad. That's like slandering God. Normally, when Malcolm would go and speak, wouldn't there be police officers around that were always following him and observing what he was doing? There were police officers always following him, but they were playing clothes policemen. They were not in, uh, they were not in uniform. But you all knew who they were. You certainly could identify them. No, they changed them. all the time. You should. They had some police sometime and some police in another time. He'd go for to one precinct and one car would drop off and another one would pick him up. This is kind of uh, ridiculous. The police wanted Malcolm dead. So why would they want to uh, protect him? I mean, people have this naive assumption that the police wanted Malcolm alive. The police wanted Malcolm dead. Do you understand that? When Malcolm said that uh, according to the Constitution of the United States, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The police chief said, we're not going to have people walking around New York with weapons. But they were. And constitutionally, nothing could be done about it. So the police, were not, the police broke into Malcolm's house and shot up the place when he was in St. Albans. And you know Malcolm that for sued. a fact? Of course I know it for a fact. It's, it's, it's in the newspapers. It's in the FBI reports. It's in the Bureau of Special Services report. I didn't dream these things up. Are you concerned about your own life right now? No, I don't worry. I tell you, I'm a man who believed that I died 20 years ago. And I live like a man who is dead already. I have no fear whatsoever of anybody or anything. With those thoughts still heavy on his mind, Malcolm headed to the Audubon Ballroom in Harlem on February 21st, 1965, to speak to the hundreds of waiting followers. But little did they know what was about to happen. I am stage left, behind the curtain. Brother Benjamin opened up, meaning that he introduced the, the speaker. He, had, he didn't immediately introduce the speaker because Brother Malcolm wasn't there. But he opened up, then Brother Malcolm came. He raised his hand and uh, a Muslim greeting. Salaam Alaikum. At that point, uh, I, I heard a rumbling behind me. Someone said, nigga, take your hands out my pocket. And Malcolm now moved in that direction from the podium and said, cool it, brothers, cool it. Malcolm had his hand up. He had said, he said, stay cool, stay calm. Just then the gunfire went off and his, his hand was up. I remember this. I turned around quickly and the next thing I saw was Malcolm falling back in a dead faint. And at that time, a short, dark guy with a goatee ran down with a shotgun, shot Brother Malcolm. A number of other people were behind him firing weapons. You right. saw the life leave him, huh? I saw the life leave him. I saw him go white, just like that. Like, the, like they say, the spirit leaves you. Whatever it is that animates a person, I saw that leave him. By now, Malcolm was probably already gone, but authorities hastily rushed him outside and desperately tried to get him across the street to the hospital emergency room. What condition was he in on arrival? He was dead on arrival. Across Harlem, life was also about to change for another man without him even knowing it. Thomas 15X Johnson says he was lying in bed recovering from a bout with rheumatoid arthritis when a neighbor came knocking at his door. Turn on the TV. I said, wait, you turn on the TV, they just hit Big Red. Big Red is what they called Malcolm That's what the answer he referred to him as Big Red, yeah. You know, and I, I turned on the TV and I'm watching them carry him across to, uh, what's that, Presbyterian Hospital? Street. I'm watching this. What he didn't know is that less than two weeks later, the police would be waiting for him outside his home. I went outside, I said, listen, you want to see me? And they said, yeah, we want to see you. I said, for what? I said, we want to take you downtown to the, uh, to the station. Please they asked for, for what? I said, we'll be the wise guy. For the assassination of Malcolm, I said, what are you joking? You got to be joking. This is a fairy tale or a dream or something, man. I'm having a nightmare here. Ahead, 
the chickens come home to roost for Khalil Islam. His nightmare was just beginning. Several days later, it's announced that Thomas 15 X Johnson, whom we know as Khalil Islam, was picked up for the execution of Malcolm X. And you knew that he wasn't there because I you saw the I knew as sure as God made green apples that he was not there, but strange things can happen. Gunned down in the Audubon ballroom by multiple assassins in a perfectly planned and orchestrated hit. Malcolm X was dead at the age of 39. But who really did it? Khalil Islam says he was pinned with a starring role in this nightmare, and he served time for it, too. But he says it was all a lie. Let's get back to the story of who killed Malcolm X. Malcolm X means to you? He meant a great deal to me and my people. I'm sorry that a good man is gone. Harlem was distraught, and the black community was mourning the loss of Malcolm X. I saw brother Malcolm as carrying my son's future in his pocket. That the, the crap that I went through as a youngster that my son would not have to go through because of Malcolm. Sitting in the back of the damn bus, peeing in, on some piece of concrete, going into people's drugstore and buying food and have your own woman tell you, we don't serve color here. The assassination Malcolm X was an unfortunate tragedy. There was also word from Nation of Islam leader Elijah Muhammad, who in a rare public appearance, came forth to deny any involvement in Malcolm's murder. Uh, the way I see it, uh, Malcolm uh, is the victim of his own preaching. He preached for us, and so he become the victim of it. How many shots were there, Chief? Apparently there were at least eight or ten shots fired, seven of which uh, hit uh, Malcolm. Were they all pistol shots, sir? Uh, I'm not certain at this time whether they were all pistol shots. Uh, we did recover a, a sawed-off saw shotgun. The blast from that shotgun was said to be the kill shot, a shot police say was delivered by Khalil Islam. They say I was the shotgun man. The shotgun man was described by several people as a dark-skinned person with a beard about five foot six. At the I, time, you didn't have a beard. Didn't have no hair. We didn't wear hair then. And you're certainly not dark-skinned. I know, but that's what they said. And so, I say it was all trumped up. Everybody was in cahoots. Listen, the lawyer was in cahoots with the DA. The DA was in cahoots with the judge. So what chance do I have? Even though you say you were at home in the bed at the time. I, I was home in the bed. Did you even own a shotgun? No. Never held one in my life. If that statement is true, it didn't seem to make a difference to the authorities investigating the murder. Remember, Khalil Islam, known in 1965 as Thomas 15X Johnson, was a hardcore follower of Elijah Muhammad and a strict disciplinarian and enforcer in the fruit of Islam. And ironically, Thomas and Malcolm both came to the Nation of Islam in very similar ways, through prison. I was a very wayward, criminal, backward, illiterate, uneducated, and whatever other negative uh, characteristics you can think of type of person until I heard the teachings of the Honorable Elijah well, Muhammad. I was, I was mixed up in, in the drugs and, uh, you know, petty crime. I never did anything that uh, only major... What kinds of crimes were you doing? No, like I said, it would be a possession of a paraphernalia, drugs. That's why I said it was nothing, nothing real serious. Mm -hmm. You know, no, uh, no robberies, no burglaries, no bank robberies and stuff like that. I wasn't involved in that, you know. What were your early impressions of the nation? Well, I'll tell you this. I was just like the average prisoner, you know, smoking, drinking, and doing everything you could do, man, to escape reality, you know. And when I heard the teachings of uh, Islam, that's when I came in total contact with my soul, we came in peace.